has happened. And I feel like 2023 was such a notably negative year for so many people in so many ways that everybody was very excited about the new year of 2024. And then right at that same time, we had this somewhat, you know, improved news about interest rates there for about a week. And so it was just kind of great timing to maybe have all of those positive attitudes about 2024 to just come and take a look at what's on the market since those interest rates improved, you know, slightly but then they went kind of right back up too. So we, we're going to still kind of continue that fun train that we've been on <laughs> for now as we kind of wait so, to see how the uh, season unfolds. Right. So do you, think, fun train. do you think we're in a buyer or a seller market right now? Um, Definitely buyer. Yeah. Buyer market. Mm -hmm. I, yeah think I think it there's a lot feels... more I don't know if it's like officially a buyer's market, yeah, but I agree that's... in that it's just there's – so much more power for them than there ever has been in the years past that it feels like we all would say buyer's market kind of when you compare it to what we were experiencing before right right see but you just told me you have multiple offer situations so how's a buyer supposed to feel about that like if we're uh, in a buyer's market but some areas have multiple offers that's kind of it's kind of interesting I'm kind of interested to hear from Crystal because I know that she's actually in a um, maybe a, di a very different climate or market than we are in mm -hmm. Austin. So how did 2023 go for you guys in that regards? And I would be curious to hear the differences that you yeah. experienced because I, I know that Austin was really particularly hit rather hard and made the news about it. So what about you guys? Gotcha. Yeah. So being out here right next to the military base, um, there were a lot of veterans that were still actively looking to buy and sell. Um, we got, I got, a, you know, a lot of veterans, really good deals. Um, we were seeing sellers, you know, rather, I don't want to say desperate, but more inclined to offering an arm and a leg to buyers yeah. just so they can sell their house. So um, sellers were definitely catering to a lot of these buyers out here. But honestly, for, for me, 2023 was a really good year just because- Yay. Yes, just okay. because, um, you know, I, I dealt with 99% of veterans and, okay. you know, it's, it's still very active out here. That's for sure. Um, What's the medium price point out there? Out here, um, medium price point last time I checked was like 270 but you can get something awesome. very decent, something move-in ready, a really good uh, starter home, whether it's cookie cutter, cutter or whether it uh, has some character for like anywhere from 220 to 230 mm -hmm. So. It's, it's, it's very affordable out here too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen reports on that being like a hot spot for even first time home buyers. Cause it's affordable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's definitely affordable. I mean, uh, central Texas, I mean, you're from Colleen. It's just an hour away from Austin. Two, five, four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even though I have a Florida area code number, people think I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, from, from Colleen, from Temple. Um, no, it's very hot out here. We I've actually been seeing people from Austin moving out here as well. We see we get we yeah. got a lot of a lot of Teslas out here, so yeah. Austinites. Wow. Uh, you. Yeah, That's uh, movement. Yeah, market's really good out here. Um was able to get tens of thousands of dollars for some clients, uh maximum concession amounts for for buyers. I will say for sellers, um it's not so hot for them. There's a ton of inventory out here. I had a couple of listings or a couple of sellers had to take their homes off the market and try again this year. So not so hot with sellers right now out here, just from what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know, JJ or, or Randy or Crystal, if you've been experiencing this, but I've ha I still have some sellers not all sellers, but I still have some sellers that are adamant to price at like 2022 prices. <laughs> are you seeing that or have you seen that for houses yeah, on the I mean, market? I think that was what I was going to follow up with. Kind of, I think you and I had the same idea, Ian, after what Crystal said. It's just, I, I think it's just sellers just really struggling with this gap year that we're having where we all just need to readjust and realize that the market was very extreme when it was that seller's market. And we just don't need to go back there. And, uh, <laughs> but we also don't need to linger around it here either where it's so difficult to get a home sold. I'm ready for, I'm ready for balance, but, um, I do feel and think that there's always going to be sellers that are just struggling with letting go of what they think the value of their home should be, especially if they recently purchased in the last, mm -hmm. you know, four years, that's, 
unfortunate. Agreed. Yeah, definitely really, really tough. It's, it's, it's hard to, I, I find myself telling the sellers that that money isn't on the table. It's not necessarily on the table just because it hit that point. It was such a, an extreme point in time. And there's so many things behind that. Yeah. And Randy, what you're talking about, like getting to a more balanced space. Yeah. Yes. Where the investment is a good idea to buy a house because you know that you will be able to sell it to willing buyers later. And that this needs to be the end of it. It doesn't need to be a line of 30 or 40 or 50 people making it impossible for buyers to ever accomplish their goals and inflating all the home values. And so it's just Anyway, I, I, I do wonder what 2024 will bring because I am really hesitant to get, um, you know, ready and engaged and excited that this year could be different because there were so many points last year where people thought it's going to be different even for still inside of 2023 and it never quite changed. So I, I do think it's really critical that we continue to wait to see what the Fed is going to do with the inflation problems and what the overall economy situation is going to look like. I mean, I, I do think that 2024 from most experts has always been on the slower side of things of like, we'll have some slight improvement from um, what a trough 2023 was, but still a, a more slow year in comparison to what everybody is ready to get to. What about you guys? What do you read? I feel like, I don't know why. I just have a really good feeling that 2024 is going to be a good year just because all of this press on interest rates dropping. I feel like it's um, almost uh, making buyers or even sellers realize that, hey, maybe right now is a good time to buy. Maybe mm -hmm. it's a good time to sell. I've got a couple buyers that brought it up to me. They're like, hey, before these interest rates drop, I want to hurry up and buy a house yeah. now. So it's like, yeah. hey, you're not wrong. You know, it's never too early never too late to buy a house but i think right now is the perfect time especially um since sellers and builders are still offering those deals you know because that's you know diminish um who knows though we can't we can't read the future but i feel like it's going to be a good year what do you think ian yeah what do you think ian <laughs> I think we're in an election year, and I always wonder who does it who does it benefit if the interest rates drop prior to the election, and it really benefits a lot of people, but definitely whoever is trying to run for office, right? If the if the, if the interest rates can drop, it should spike the economy, and I say spike loosely because there are a lot of things that happen way later than they're supposed to. I think you brought up this point, Randy. It's like everything is just so slow moving. So you hear that interest rates are dropping two months before you actually feel it half the time, right? And you'll see it and then it's back up and then all of a sudden it comes down and then it's like, okay, well, that's now the new baseline. So I'm really excited that that conversation is happening because it spurs the conversation with buyers and sellers. And it also kind of lights a fire under people that don't realize that we're not just hitting a spring market. We're, we're hitting a spring market, an election market, and a rise that's coming up from a slower or more buyer-centric market. And so people, we've talked about people thinking that the prices are going to come down further when interest rates drop. Obviously, that's not going to happen. We know that. We know that the more competition, the prices don't have to drop because 10 people are going to line up to buy your house. And this happened in 2020, 2020 2021, and 2022. So I'm I'm really thinking that it's going to rise. Uh, and not because I'm a realtor. I, it has nothing to do with me being a realtor. This is really important. Like we're The reason why we're doing this is we're, we're always transparent. We've always been pretty transparent. We can only say what we know and what we've seen. You think Anytime values I've are going to rise? I think property values are going to rise. I think it's already dipped as much as it can reasonably with the amount of demand coming back into play. Now, it's going to be dependent on your market. So Austin is going to be right. different than Colleen Belt at the Temple, which is going to be different than Colorado Springs, which is going to be different than Florida and Tennessee. But here in Austin, we still have jobs coming here. We still have a growth mindset. Georgetown, 
and northern and Williamson County is still one of the fastest growing, which is right in between Belton and and uh, uh, Austin. Like there's there's no reason, no logical reason why our price points won't stabilize and rise as we're entering this this market that's transitioning from what's been a buyer's market for a short bit into back back into a seller's market or even a balanced market. It just doesn't make sense for it to go any other way. That was actually, that's a headliner of um, Austin Business Journal is the strong growth scene as likely for Austin Metro in New Year, despite the speed bumps in 23. And I kind of read through the article to see if it would be an interesting read for us to go through. And they don't really touch on anything too specific for us to dive into. But what I did notice from it was that it was kind of riddled with, um, but experts say this with caution or experts say this as long as nothing large disrupts this year again, because we continue to have those instances in all of our years of something disrupting us. Um, and so then Ian bringing up the election year is like, that could be it. <laughs> that could be <laughs> the thing that really throws us, you know, for a curve here and just kind of messes up all of our news. But in general, it was describing that Austin has so much growth. We still have these companies moving into town. We still have people coming in here for these jobs. And so it would show that we should have um, a prosperous 2024, a moderate, um, but prosperous, <laughs> Moder moderately prosperous is the way is what I'm trying to get out here. I've seen different articles say different things. Oh, what did you read? What do you have? I've seen, I mean, I've, I've heard... Even Austin Board of Realtors, they have a economic forecast, like a YouTube ten minute like weekly podcast thing. They're they're saying it's probably gonna be flat. Ah, Realtor.com. What what's that? What's that? What date is that? This um, the one I'm I think it's like about. the first week of the year. I just okay. tuned in real quick. Realtor.com has it. Uh here, let me pull this up. This is Austin, Austin Business KU. Journal is January eighth for me. So realtor.com, but the Austin board of realtors is the one that's so, that. so I want to, I want to add a caveat in here real quick. Um, for anybody that's watching this, a, a lot of these articles say experts say when they say experts say you have to be really uh, cognizant of what, who the expert is in that conversation, because if that expert is, a group of realtors. Normally, it's not. Normally, it's one realtor in one brokerage that said one thing whenever they say experts say. That's usually what happens. And, and that's frustrating. The second thing is when you're looking at something like uh, Realtor.com or Zillow or Trulia or what, a lot of them are at a high national level when they're speaking to this. So if it's flat, it's going to be flat across the board. But it might not be flat in Austin. Now, even so if they're targeting Austin, they they mention Austin just for the uh, just for the clicks. So they'll say, "Oh, yeah, we're going to see it's going to be a great real or flat real estate market, especially in cities like." And then they'll list list twenty cities in the writing because it gets people to click there. But they weren't specific about Austin, so you got to be you just got to pay attention to that. And I know you know this; they're very really smart. That's why they're watching this channel. Is this is this sharing? Yes. Okay. This is Realtor.com, and it does a U.S., and it does in Austin. So it reads, new report predicts home prices in Austin will fall next year. The new Realtor.com report predicts a significant dip in Austin home prices in 2024, but a local realtor believes that prediction is far-fetched. See, everyone's saying different things because no one really knows. Um, where is it? Right here. A new report from Realtor.com predicts the home prices in the U.S. will dip by 1.7%. In 2024, but what's surprising is its prediction that the Austin area will see a 12.2 percent drop wow. in home prices next year. Jesus, um, as a real estate agent, when I read that, it frustrates me because, um, just like selfishly, it's like, oh, I can't stand another year of like rocky business. But as a citizen here in Austin, I look at that and think like, it's probably necessary because <laughs> the home prices are still too high. Um, but that's very different. You're right, JJ, from the couple of articles that I browsed uh, this week. So that's interesting how different everybody's perspective is. And it's also different from actual activity that I'm seeing kind of 
popping up here in this first couple of weeks. But again, we haven't really allowed the season to even open up just yet. So we don't, we don't know what's coming for us. Like what? Can I, can, can I play devil's advocate yeah. real quick? This goes out to anyone searching for information about homes across the nation. If you're looking on, let's say, Google or Bing or something like that, and you're not looking incognito mode or in a browser like DuckDuckGo, it's going to serve you up what it thinks you want to see. So when you're looking, it's going to show you something that aligns with what is going to get you to click. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So that's why with Randy, it might show you one article and JJ it might show you a different article that are divergent because it wants you to have this conversation and this thought process. And that is every social media platform. We all know this. We've all seen the social network and movies like that. So go into DuckDuckGo. Don't go into incognito mode. Go into the YouTube agents that you trust and listen to the conversations that they're having and the, and the information that they're sharing and then draw your conclusions as to what you think. I've got clients that have done that and I, they win. They win when they can take all the information, filter it, from trusted sources and say, based on what I know in the world, based on what the people that I trust in the world are saying that do this every day, this is where I'm going to make my decision. Those are the people that win. And that's where we are right now. I also think it may depend on the price point. I mean, I've, I've seen, that's a good point, JJ. you know, like the $2 million home or the $1 million house in central Austin might move differently from, North Austin at five hundred thousand, yeah, four hundred thousand. So it's interesting. Yeah, but I shoot. Know. Let's talk about this two hundred fifty thousand dollar house in friggin' Belton. <laughs> yeah. What? Two hundred thousand dollar house. I feel like prices out here might slightly rise just because we are in you know a lower bracket. Uh, I think we, we might see a rise out here, you know, just because obviously well, prices go down. I, do you see military activity increasing movement in your I area? I do. I do. So I'm in an election year? Oh, in an election No, I see it happening right now. Um, I heard of this with the military referral network, and just within the past week, I counted the referrals or the, the amount of buyers that are coming in. Uh, I got, I've, got, I've gotten 50. 50 buyers already versus yeah well no i don't have buyers i haven't claimed them all but i was about to say you've got three realtors on the call right now that love working with uh referral clients <laughs> I'm, I'm <getting laughs> that's more, hilarious right i'm getting more uh notifications from this referral network than i usually do um but again this is just what i'm seeing so who, who knows there's pcs season i mean people are you know, going to be moving in. And I don't know. I just, it's, it's different in every market. I, just, I see a lot more activity going on. I really do. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah, that's why I'm think... so excited. That's why the market. Hold on. Look at this guy. This guy. Bless. Full camo outside. <laughs> there you oh, go. Yeah. That's full. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> He's ready for you. <laughs> He's ready to go. <laughs> the VA loan. Yeah. I think uh, even to like, 200s to 300s is going to appreciate probably faster. You know, it's, it's, it's just, again, you got to talk to your local realtor to really understand like which neighborhood is going to pop, which product might be moving a little differently. But is that different than any other time where the lower price points increase at a more rapid rate? That's no different than any other time in history, yeah, really, right? Generally, there's like a sweet spot for affordability, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's whatever the lowest price point is. Yeah. That's it. That's what most people For the area. Afford. Exactly. Yeah. And that... I had a buyer buy a, a new build at 290 in Killeen, um, and a, a year ago, they're looking into selling. Brand numbers, it's worth about 300 now, so... I don't know what the percentage is on that, but it's some some appreciation. So from just a year ago. And that's just one house, man. <laughs> so. Ian, what yeah. do you think into uh, JJ's article about the 12% dip? Do you, do you lean that direction of thinking we're going to lose uh, some more value or that we're going to um, kind of take off? All right. Can I go conspiracy on you? I'm ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> 
checking out. I, more than other people, because I was in IT before I was in real estate, I think that the wave of AI won't impact realtors as much, but it will impact a lot of people that thought they were secure in their jobs, especially when it comes to any jobs that are non-service industry. Very interesting. And so if we get hit where jobs are lost, that affects people selling. Well, if a lot of, if the market gets flooded with sellers, that just keeps it in a situation where the prices aren't gonna rise too high. But if the interest rates drop because everybody's losing their jobs and the economy needs a boost, now we're going to have a ton of houses on the market and a ton of people able to afford houses. And it's just going to create a frenzy of houses buying and selling and people moving again, almost the same as it was during the pandemic times. That's my conspiracy for mid this year. So another possible crazy thing to happen to us in a year to throw everything off is what you're bringing up here, <laughs> which I'm. Listen, you got to realize we're <laughs> in a situation. We're in a situation where in America right now we have no idea what side, I say side, is is even capable of winning an election. It is unprecedented. It's ridiculous. So we have that ridiculousness. We have no idea what's going on with our economy and our market. And we have all these startup culture people that are trying to unknowingly getting rid of jobs, thousands, tens of thousands at a time with one app. Yeah, That's going to impact a lot of people. All of those things together are going to create this hurricane of th this frenzy somehow in the market. I just don't know what that is. I don't so know are you saying the AI like. economy or the AI users? Or... Oh. So the way I'm going to say it is this. IBM just released an article saying they... Oh, no. Uh -oh. They're cutting Not him off. You. He's on to something. <laughs> Here we go. No. Okay. Yeah, no. IBM... <laughs> IBM released an article, I want to say last week, uh, where they let go of 7,800 people. And they said, we're not going to backfill those jobs. That's attrition. The reason why is because all of those jobs are something that AI can do by, the, by mid-2024. Yeah. So they had all these people, and they were like, don't need them. And that's now. It's increasing at such an exponential rate that by the middle of this year, it's going to be insane how many people can be displaced that will be but can be displaced and i don't think america's ready for it listen ian one of my 2024 goals is to be able to sleep at night and you're really stomping all over that <laughs> i do have to help you sleep better at night to, to, be, to help you sleep better at night if this does happen you will have a flurry of listings because that you're a good agent. <laughs> no, 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 no. If the interest rates come down, you will also have a flurry of buyers. So you'll have a flurry of listings and a flurry of buyers. And the agents that are poised to be able to handle this incoming flux of clientele yeah. will be in a really good position, just like at the pandemic. Just like them. I had so many people that were reaching out, I couldn't keep up. I probably helped yeah. one out of every 10 people that asked me for it which is sad. It's sad because I wasn't ready for how many people actually needed help that I should have been able to help. Yeah. I'm ready this time. Wait, how does the AI play into this? So like, let's say all those IBM workers. Follow along with that entire conspiracy theory. <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm, okay. Like, are they here's how, here's how this or works, JJ. or Here, here's, here's how this works. You know, you know, uh, Tesla cars can drive themselves, right? Yes. Okay. The issue is regulation hasn't caught up. They ha they're, they're like, we don't trust it. We're not going to let it happen. But as soon as they flip that switch, let's say that it gets to the point where you don't actually need to intervene. I can summon my car to me. Imagine if I could click a button and say, my car is available for rental, where someone can go into an app and say, hey, come to me, pick me up and drop me off somewhere without a human driver. Right. How many Uber drivers lose their job? Mm -hmm. right. How many people? How many people are realtors that also drive Uber? 
that can no longer get the extra money from Uber. Yeah, and then they can't the keep their real estate like, license. Like, do the job transfer? Are there people working in AI or jobs disappearing? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are some examples of jobs besides like Uber that people okay. do because of AI? I just taught a class in, San, uh, where was I left two weeks ago? South Dakota, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And it was an AI class, two realtors. Say, and I basically- Loaded with information. <laughs> I am a nerd, I'm a nerd in AI. That's why I said, can I conspiracy with yes, you? Yes, exactly, I taught a class that said, I'm here. And I tell my, I have virtual assistants and an assistant. And I said, I don't need them. I have an AI app that does 90% of the things that they do, right? So the problem is I like people. I believe that real estate will always be a people business and, and convenient. Yeah, com sorry, conversations will always be at the heart of real estate, right? Customer service is always at the heart of this. I think that's the new, new, that is the, re the necessary skill set that too many people are letting go is customer service and trades. So we're kind of de-evolving, if you will, because the trades, you can't get AI to be a plumber yet, but you can get AI to write you a listing description. You can get AI to uh, create a script for you on Instagram so that you can speak eloquently about the thing you should already know about, but you never learned because you never had to. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm making a you want to see what there's a story here zillow's 2024 housing market predictions <laughs> and it one of the predictions does encompass ai Ugh, okay Next. what else and it's kind of vague let's <laughs> check it out uh -huh. let's do the window Is this it? <coughs> Excuse me. all right are you ready for zillow 2024 housing. I'm not ready to hear more about how it's <laughs> going to ruin my life. <laughs> it's really vague. It actually, I don't know. Let's let's visit it. Okay, six predictions. Oh, regarding Austin, uh, in 2021, in 2023, the company declared Austin's housing market ice cold. Um, I remember. But that. in a Thursday interview, Zillow senior economist, sorry guy, I I don't even want to mess your name up. Orphy. OP, Orphy, you know this guy? Devoon guy, yeah. No. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> has been a great year for Austin in the U.S. 2023 has been a great year for Austin in the U.S. Um, Austin's one of, the, one of those metros that really lead the way when it comes to the building of new housing. Housing inventory is now up 23% compared to before the uh, that. I'm careful what I say here. Okay, six predictions, six national predictions. One, more homes will go on the market unless mortgage rates fall. Buyer's costs will level off. Single family rental is the new starter home. Huh. Rental demands will surge near downtown. Why? Why would that? I'm surprised by that. I think, I think there's still an affordability thing because these are two rental... Uh, headlines pulling away from city centers. I felt like with all the empty commercial space that, but maybe I'm just thinking of it in the wrong way. And what you're saying makes sense. And this is national too. national predictions. <laughs> Number five, traditional buyers will compete with flippers over homes. Traditional buyers will compete with flippers, flippers over homes. Six AI is coming to the, to the home search experience. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm. But it says here that it's just a tool that people are going to use. It makes the process much easier along with what, you know. That's because people don't understand it. I've had AI on my website, I don't know, for three years. It's, it's always been there. Anytime there's a chat bot that you're talking to, it's no different. The, the difference, uh, it, it is a little different. The difference is that it is more formulaic and can take all the answers from the whole of the internet and apply it to answer that question. That's really it, or whatever sources you align it with. So if I say, take the top 10 sources that I as Ian trust and only answer questions based on those sources, then when somebody comes to my website, 
if they ask a question and my AI responds to it, it's going to be based on those sources because I verified those sources. So it's doing that job just like I would, except it can have conversations with thousands of people at once. But a lot of people. So we want to look at this. Yeah. Like Ian is saying, like as a realtor with our business, utilizing AI, we get in front of it as long as we're part of the home search experience. That is exactly what I'm saying because Zillow is already doing it. But Zillow, their whole job is to collect your information and sell it to the realtor that's willing to pay the most. Okay, So Zillow is spending a lot of money to make sure that their AI is superb. I These predictions like are interesting too. Tell, I feel like people can tell when they're talking to a real person and then when they're talking to AI. So, I mean, do you, do you let your AI just generate its own responses, Ian, or do you go in there and add your own flair to it and say, this is my personality? Like, can you go in there and customize it yourself? Yeah, you can customize everything. I don't think it necessarily matters, though. I mean, it depends, right? Like, when I talk to AI, it does sound like a robot, but if I get the information I need, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, thank you, robot. You know? Gotcha. But, but it depends. It depends. I, I can have my face, my voice, and my knowledge responding to people without being there. In my voice, with my face. I agree with what Crystal is saying, but I also think, because I I don't like it, (laughs) but I also think that we're like a dying breed. We're just going to age out and what's behind us is people that are totally accepting of the, of the robot. So like, yeah, Ian's all about it. He's in it. (laughs) He's ready. He's, he's adapted, but like, there's even the younger, those young whippersnappers that they don't care. And that's all they know. That's all they've grown up with is. But how many people complain about Austin changing versus how many people are moving to Austin because it's exciting? It's the same thing, right? You have all these people that are like, oh, man, Austin's getting crazy. And those are all the people that moved here 10 years ago. It's the same thing with our businesses. We've got all these agents that are like, man, I wish I wish agents would just get back into conversation with each other, spend time with each other. And then you have these other agents that are coming in and they're like, man, I just want to text people. I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to do my job and be done. It boils down to preference. Well, it boils down to what people are expecting, which is what agents aren't good at sharing. Agents aren't good at telling people what they need to expect during the process before they get into the process. Right. So most people and we know this, most people will start a home search before they even know how much money they can spend and then they get lured in. And at that point, if you're not the one having that conversation with them, AI will be. Well, I think kind of steering back to our original discussion of what do we think 2024 is going to bring for me personally? I feel that what I what I have learned from the last few years is that you can ha- you could have no idea what the year is going to bring you. Uh, so I have zero predictions on what the economy is going to do for us and the election year and the interest rates because I don't know. It's uh, continues to surprise all of us on the direction that that actually takes. So the strategy for anybody buying or selling in twenty twenty four is to just talk through your personal world and your personal situation and your personal bubble and to navigate through just those guidelines. And then that is how you figure out what your next steps are to take. Because I find it to be rather impossible lately to predict what the rest of the world is going to do. But you can always predict and figure out what you need to do for your own situation. So that's kind of how I take day by day for now um, as we continue to live in a world that has no seasonality, which is getting old. Yeah, and I, I agree. It's it's very situational, and even from a general snapshot, because of the second half of twenty twenty two, the dip of twenty twenty three, you got to pay attention more because the longer the dip, 
the more you got to pay attention because in real estate, that dip typically, you know, it's all up and down. So the longer you're in a dip, the more it's about to curve up. So I think it just gets more interesting, right? Like the 2024 and 2025 is in 2026. It's going to be like crazy, but I don't know if it's going to be this year, next year, or 2026. And situational is a really good word because it's also like you, you prepare, you need to make sure that you're prepared for the worst case scenarios that can always happen. And so back whenever Mm -hmm. we were in line with 50 other people and way overbidding on these properties, um, a discussion that I made sure to always have with the clients was, um, how long do you intend to be here? Are you ready to hunker down and live here for, for some time um, in case you need to wait for your value to play out that you're about to bid on this house? And so that's going to continue to be an important discussion to have with yourself as a buyer um, or seller of what what are your future short-term, long-term goals and what would those goals look like um, in each possible scenario that could come out of this next year or two, um, with, with the nation's economy and with all these unanswered questions and AI coming to, you know, take away your entire life in one night, according to Ian. (laughs) So, yeah. Like what if your house dips 12% and AI takes over the world? Can you handle that? (laughs) What are you going to do then? (laughs) (laughs) Is this still an okay purchase for you? All right, y'all. I know, I know we haven't gone uh, full time, but I think we're going to end it here for a number of reasons. But um, we will get back to this in a little bit when we'll see each other again, two weeks, and we'll, uh, we'll chat more about what's going on. So, Warren, 2024. thank you everybody for being able to, to hop on and pay attention. If you're still here, we appreciate you and uh, have a wonderful 2024. We're looking, we're looking positive. I think it's positive. I think 2024 is positive. Always. Forget always. This. Yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all. All right. Have a Bye good one. Thanks, everybody. Bye.